Could you survive 600 days in solitary confinement? One man in Virginia would survive, if that's what you want to call it. Taekwin Lee would live in an 80 square foot cell for over a year and a half, and it would break him. Lee had been convicted in 2011 of numerous home invasions and was sentenced to 78 years in prison. He would start his time in solitary confinement on May 26, 2016. After being transferred from another facility, Virginia DLC staff placed Lee in solitary confinement after they intercepted an email from him that contained a threat to a correctional officer at another facility. Lee was allowed to shower three times a week and had an hour of recreation time daily, also alone. The recreation space was the size of a parking spot. Lee had a history of mental health issues and this would only make it worse. While in solitary, he lost the ability to speak and would even bark like a dog. At the end of his confinement, an evaluation was completed by a psychologist. In his report, he noted, this offender presents with bizarre behaviors and delusional thought content. He does not maintain his hygiene as evidenced by a strong, foul odor coming from his person and his cell. He speaks in numbers and neologisms. Neologisms are new words or phrases. Lee was making up his own language. On January 31st, 2018, Lee would be transferred to another prison that specializes in mental health treatment. The family of Lee would sue and the case would be settled. He was awarded a monetary settlement of $150,000 with an agreement to transfer Lee to a facility in New Jersey. Although I'm not sure the money will solve anything for Lee since his current release date is listed as June 12, 2352. Lawsuits continue to this day over the conditions at this prison. This Virginia prison is the last stop for problem inmates inside the state correctional system. Today, we'll be looking at Red Onion State Prison, the most restrictive facility in Virginia. Let's get into it. Red Onion is in the far western region of Virginia. This is nothing like the population centers near DC, but rather the mountainous area known as Appalachia. Plans to build a supermax prison were announced in 1992. Red Onion is named after the mountain it sits atop. This area is coal country and coal companies used a method called mountaintop removal mining to hit the coal seams. The result is a flattened peak with an area for construction. The state of Virginia would purchase the land from Pitson Coal Company and a $70 million prison would be built on 378 acres. Construction would finish in 1999 at a time when coal mines were struggling, giving hope to people in the area that a state job would save them from poverty. Red Onion State Prison is located in the town of Pound, Virginia, a dying town in Northern Wise County. So much so that the Virginia State Legislature voted to revoke the town charter if changes weren't made. Pound was able to recover and will still remain an incorporated town within the state, but it will never be the place it was when the coal mines were bustling with work. Now, the median household income of the town sits at just over $26,000. Considering that the US household income median is over $70,000. To say that the people here are struggling is an understatement. The prison has four housing units with recreation yards towards the center with a centrally located kitchen area. Surrounding the prison is two razor wire top fences. There are only two guard towers at this prison although the view of the fence line is fully covered by armed officers in the towers. The prison would create nearly 500 jobs for the local economy, making it a welcome addition to the area. The prison can hold 1,010 of the most dangerous men in Virginia, level five and six offenders. In 2021, the average daily population was closer to 700. What are some of the recent incidents at this prison? Let's get into it. But first, hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Anwar Phillips would be discovered dead in his cell in January 2022, and questions would arise as to how a man in a single cell would obtain the items to end his own life. Authorities would allege that another man, William Pettigrew, would transfer a hand braided rope to Phillips, who would then use it to take his own life. Pettigrew would be charged with murder but after months of investigation, which included available surveillance footage, 
the charges would be dropped. There were also concerns that staff were not doing the required 40 minute checks on inmates in their cells. The mother of Phillips begged the media for answers, but it does not look like she will be getting any closure on the incident. One of the most infamous inmates in the Virginia prison system, Robert Gleason, would kill another inmate at Red Onion State Prison. Gleason was in prison for murder and had already killed his cellmate at Wallens Ridge State Prison. While waiting sentencing on that case, Gleason became upset because he wanted to receive the death penalty. He told the court that if he does not receive capital punishment, then he would kill again. To prevent me from taking someone else out is to get the death penalty. Do I deserve the death penalty? Damn right it is. Your law states premeditation, inmate killing. There's a lot more that's going to be said on this stand when it does go to trial. Due to his frustration, he would lure Aaron Cooper, who was in the neighboring recreation cage, over to him. Through a wire fence, he would strangle Cooper. Following this incident, Gleason would receive his wish and be executed by the state of Virginia on January 16, 2013. While incarcerated at Red Onion State Prison on a murder charge, Mitchell and Nicholas would write U.S. Magistrate Judge Ruth Miller a letter threatening her. In part, the letter would read, Dear Ruth, you thought that I was a nobody. Now I must manifest my dream of your death. It is more fun when the prey knows it is being hunted. Patiently submitted, signed, Mitchell and Nicholas. Nicholas was being housed at Red Onion State Prison, but was convicted in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The prison has been contracted to house some offenders from the U.S. territory. While inside Red Onion, Joshua Phelps would become an informant against one of the most feared prison gangs in America, the Aryan Brotherhood. Phelps would file a lawsuit to be moved after he was outed as an informant. Phelps claimed that the game had put a kill on sight order against him. He is now housed in a South Carolina prison. I'm not sure how much safer he will be in that prison, given that this gang has nationwide influence. What are some of the infamous inmates to be housed here? We'll take a look at two, one that made national headlines and another serial killer that terrorized his own family. Lee Boyd Malvo, also known as the Beltway Sniper, is housed at Red Onion. Malvo, along with his father figure, John Allen Muhammad, killed 10 people throughout the DC area in 2002 by shooting through an opening in their trunk. This led to a panic in the area until their arrest. Muhammad was executed in 2009, but Malvo received multiple life sentences. He has been at Red Onion for some time now and seen by authorities as still a threat to staff and other inmates. Suspected serial killer Joaquin Rams is also housed at Red Onion. He was convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the drowning death of his 15-month-old son in October 2012. Although this was his only conviction, several people around Rams have ended up dead. In 2003, his girlfriend was shot to death in her home. Ram's mother was also killed in 2008. Rams won't be leaving Red Onion anytime soon. This was a profile of one of the most dangerous prisons in Virginia, one mired in controversy with its solitary confinement policy and history of violence. Thanks for watching. As always, see you next time.